Hi and welcome to this week's episode of Gridiron TV. I'm Alan Price and I'm joined once again by Stuart Young. Stuart, it's been a great weekend of football gone by. Yeah, it has, Alan. Again, you know, team, teams there, you know, playing for the, the playoffs again. It's getting to that stage where there's only a couple of games left in, in some of the divisions. Um, and, and again, you know, the weather played havoc yet again this week. But do you know something, Alan? We're getting there. You're seeing teams slip up. You're seeing teams, you know, take their chances. And um, it's certainly hotting up going into the last, these last two weeks. Yeah, you're absolutely right. We had some exciting results from this week and we'll run through them all. And now as we approach the end of the season, we can see that across the board, across all the, the conferences, whether it's Division 2, Division 1 or Premiership, we've got some exciting battles with two or even three teams vying for those top spots and those playoff positions. So we'll start with the scores from the Premiership. They had a couple of games. Um, we had the Bristol Aztecs facing the Olympians for the first time in a long time. For the two teams, third and fourth place in the Premiership South, uh, it was a, a close one, but the Olympians managed to get this one ten points to six. Yeah, it was always it was always going to be a close game, Alan. Um, do you know they, they're, they're basically both fighting for the that uh, third spot. I mean, it's again, it's still all to play for though. At the end of the day, you know, if, if Bristol Aztecs can keep picking up points somewhere, and um, you sort of hoping for the, the Olympians to sort of lose out there, but just. Uh, I think the Olympians are going to are going to sneak this one in the third place. It's been difficult for both teams where you're, you're playing against the, the the Warriors and the Blitz. It's going to be hard to win that division, but you know, fair play to them. Both four and four at the moment, um, and and you know, certainly you know, still all to play for before the season ends. Yeah, you mentioned the Warriors and the Blitz, and that was the other the big rematch. Uh, the Warriors had their visit from NFL linebacker Ray Lewis, and uh, they went head to head once again. Warriors looking for the second win out of two for the, the matches between the teams. And we were following this online, and it was the Warriors that took this one again. It was 18-14, to 14, so uh, another close match, but a little bit more uh, points on the board than before. There was. I think there was only a, a point or two in the last game, Alan. And to be fair, you look at the Blitz, the Blitz led for most of this game, um, and the Warriors basically fought back. I, I, I predicted the Warriors last week um, in our score prediction, and, and I was right, going nine and zero again. It's going to take a very, very good side to beat the London Warriors at the moment. They're very dominant in the division. You know, I think the the, the tide has turned in regards to the power changing in London. Um, you know, at one point it used to be the Olympians, um, and then obviously the Blitz who were unbeaten for for a few years, and now the Warriors are unbeaten. So you know. <laughs> It's going to take a good team to beat them, Alan. And I'll be honest with you now, I think I think the Warriors could be the Premier Tour champions this year. So let's move on to Division 1. And we'll start off with the central game. Uh, the Mavericks taking on the Warriors for the second time in close succession. Uh, Mavericks winning 17-15 to with a almost last-second field goal. So uh, a heartbreaker for the Warriors. But Mavericks move on and get another victory. Yeah, again, I mean, another close game, and you know, certainly both teams, none of them are going to go out there and, and, and destroy each other. Let's be honest. But you know, you look at a game seventeen fifteen. It means both teams won't want to give too much away, but they didn't really want to go gung ho either. And you know, all credit to the Mavericks winning that one and taking themselves to, to third on the table at six and two. So you know, congratulations to the guys down in East Kent uh, for that one. And you know, in commissioners to South Wales Warriors. But you know, at the end of the day. Mavericks have got a game in hand. Um, you know, if they win that, then unfortunately it's, it's pretty much over for uh, the, the South Wales Warriors, I'm afraid. Yes, absolutely. And uh, if we move a little bit further north, we'll look at the, the Senators and Nighthawks. So uh, it just keeps going from bad to worse for the Nighthawks, losing out 39 points to six. But uh, a, a nice win for the Senators to, to prop up their scores. Yeah, absolutely, Alan. It's, you know, it's, if you'd asked again, I keep saying this, but if you'd asked at the start of the season that the Nighthawks would be finishing, the, 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 or not finished yet, but at this stage of the season, 0-8, I'd have just laughed at you because they've always been a very good, consistent side, the Nighthawks. I don't know what's happened down the organisation there, but I'm sure next season they'll, they'll pop back up. The centres, you know, let's be honest, out of the playoffs, but, you know, certainly playing for pride here, um, making sure they don't finish at the bottom half of the table. They'll want to try and finish out on, on, on a positive note. Yes, absolutely. And um, staying in the north, we had the the top two teams uh, battling the Nottingham, Nottingham Caesars, excuse me, travelling up to face the West Coast Trojans. And we've seen the highlights uh, online, and it was a high scoring game, but a very one sided game. Fifty points to six in favour of the Trojans. So 
uh, they're looking good for a, a good strong start running into the playoffs. Oh, definitely. I mean, what, what, what Guy McNeil, of the head coach of the uh, Trojans, will want is to, to sure he, he secures home field advantage throughout the playoffs, which I think is very, very important. Um, teams don't like to travel too far. And I think you know, if he can start winning out, um, you know, sell the next two games, you know, he, he could secure that. And again, you know, it's another game where they've, where they've scored high points. You know, and we look at the running back who, who had stats through the roof at the weekend. Again, you know, I don't think there's anyone there to stop the Trojans. Like, I, I believe we'll see the Trojans in the final this year. Um, they're looking very strong. OK. And um, one more game to cover off from Division 1 is uh, down back in the Central Division. We've got the Renegades up against the Kent Exiles. This one was a fairly easy one for Berkshire. 25 points to nil. But no doubt they, will, they won't take any credit away from the Exiles. Uh, but they are now looking strong to uh, try and uh, pip other teams in this this tight top of the conference clashes that they have with, with people like the Mavericks. Yeah, it's, you know, again, Berkshire Renegades have been fantastic this season. You know, incredible off the organisation, well-organised team. Kent Exiles, you know, I don't think they're really going to pose any problems to the Renegades. I think the Renegades are really looking strong to get to the playoffs. Will they beat Sussex Thunder to the division? I doubt it very much. You know, Sussex Thunder have got two games to play and uh, Berkshire have got one. Or, you know, I, I believe that the Thunder will win that one, but then who will the Renegades get in Division 1? Do they travel north to see uh, Gary McNay's team? And if that's the case, then they're up for a tough, tough challenge. Um, but I, I believe the Thunder will take this title on, on this division. So that's the roundup for Division 1. Uh, unfortunately, we lost the Shropshire Coventry game, again, due to weather, as you mentioned. But we'll mm -hmm. now move into Division 2, where the bulk of the games were. And going from north to south, we've got the Edinburgh Wolves and the Clyde Valley Blackhawks. Uh, the Wolves were looking good, but then uh, things turned against them in the, the last quarter, and, and the Blackhawks managed to, to claw it back and, and pull out a tie from this game. They did, Alan, and... You know, to be fair, going into this match, um, home game for Edinburgh, you know, Edinburgh top of the table, being 7-1 and one at the time, um, they were favourites going into this match. And I think anybody would have admitted that. And they did, yeah, you're right, they started the game off well. But you know something, I'll credit to Clyde Valley. They, they, had a, they obviously had a game plan. They stuck to that game plan. Um, and, and they came away with a draw. I mean, you were expecting a, a more high-scoring game. And I certainly wasn't expecting the draw. The first draw I've actually seen in the bank ever I think um, but all credit to Clay Valley you know they've, they've, they've remained in the you know in playoff position they've got Glasgow um, uh, in a couple of weeks time you know and if, if, as long as they win that um, you know they'll be going to the playoffs yeah it's another three-way battle between those two teams and also the, the Hurricanes uh, but moving further south the, on the same day we had the Pathfinders facing off against the Blue Raiders in the first of two games that they'll, they'll face off for the, the the last two games of the season, this one went to the Pathfinders 35 to nil, so fairly comfortable for them, and that confirms them in the playoffs. It does, uh, it certainly does. Uh, it's, it's, you know, you look at a lot of divisions. Um, we've just covered their island, and and, and there's probably about three or four teams in the hunt for that second playoff slot. You look at Division 2 East, the, the no people close to them is, is the Gladiators 4-4. Four four. Um, you know, you take Willie White's team, the Peterborough Saxons, 7-0 and oh at the moment. Um, you know, going very, very strong, perfect record at the moment. And uh, Milton Key Pathfinders, you know, they've had a cracking season. You know, I don't think anybody was going to take that away from them. I think the Saxons and the Pathfinders are the two strongest teams in that division. And no disrespect to the rest of the teams here, obviously. There, there's some good teams there, but I don't think, that, you know, at the start of the season, I think you could have predicted that, that division. Yes, absolutely. They're the two teams that are standing out. But further down uh, in the same group, you had the Cheetahs uh, against the Pumas, and that was 45 points to nil in favour of Watford. We spoke to mm -hmm. uh, Al Tepper, the uh, offensive line coach from the Cheetahs. So he, he was describing yesterday about the team's thoughts on the year. So it's, it's not gone perfectly to plan, but they're, they're still building. So uh, perhaps next year we'll see much more from them. I, I think we will, Alan. I'll be honest. The, the Cheetahs, you know... The, the, as much as they don't have the greatest record, they're three and five. But do you know something? I don't think that really merits in, in the kind of team that they actually are. I think they're better than three and five, much better than three and five. I think you're right. Next season, I can see uh, Watford challenging, um, not only for the title, but you know, I think the title could be too much for them with these teams being in here. 
depending if the Saxons or the Pathfinders get promoted, obviously, um, if the promotions are actually still on for, for, for this year. Uh, but I can see Watford coming back really strong next year. They'll be one of the teams to watch in Division 2. Yeah, certainly. And then we'll finish off with uh, Central now in Division 2. Uh, another uh, sort of three-way clash for the top, for the Predators, the Titans and the Romans, all looking to, to get into those top two spots. We had the Predators and the Romans facing off. Um, but Predators dominating this one, 51 points to 7. So mm. it does them the world of good to finish off the season and then uh, roll into the playoffs as well. It does. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's probably, apart from Division 2 North, and, and probably Division 2 North and Central, it's probably two, one of the two tightest divisions um, in the whole of British football at the moment. There's three teams here applying for the playoff positions. I, I believe, and if you're going to ask me now if, who I think is going to take it, it's definitely going to be Sheffield take the division. Um, you know, to try and gain a home field advantage. Um, if you know, if the results go right in Division Two North, if Ember win their last game against Carlisle and Glasgow in, you know, um, it looks like the Titans could be making that travel up to Edinburgh. Um, you know, who they played before because they used to be in the Division Two uh, North. I think they used to play cross division games at the time when I when we played. Um, tough team to play though, Titans. You know, certainly not a team that you really want to be up against. The Romans. We're, we're, you know, we're never the, we're the best team in the world, but you look at them now. I mean, fantastic turnaround, you know, in, in recent years for them. And all credit to the players who are working hard down in Chester. They're still in the hunt, but I believe the Predators and Titans will, 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 will take the playoff slots in that one. Yeah, you mentioned the Titans there, and and they weren't to be outdone this week either, uh, winning 44 points to nil against the Surge. So, as you mentioned, mm-hmm. it's all to play for. Uh, three teams trying to fit into two slots, but. Uh, right behind them, you had the Bombers and the Railroaders. So we had the tie between Edinburgh and Clyde Valley. So unusual mm-hmm. as a tie is, you know, you, you maybe see one in, in a while. But now we've got two in the same weekend. Um, yeah. Deems, it's, it's, Deems it's, trading the scores either way, and it's, it's ended up 30 apiece. It certainly sounded like a more exciting draw than the Edinburgh uh, Blackhawks game, to be honest. 30 all, you know. Credit to both teams, obviously, wanting to go for it, try and keep their seasons alive um, and, and try and finish it with a winning season. Um, but 30 all, you know, credit to both teams. It sounds like an interesting game and a very exciting game from what I've heard. Well, that rounds up the scores from week 14. Uh, so, Stuart, let's run through a little preview of this weekend's matches. We'll start at the Premiership. We've got the East Coast Pirates facing off against the Mustangs. Uh, which way do you think this one's going to go? Is it going to be the Pirates with another victory or is it going to be Doncaster's turn this time? Well, Alan, to be honest, both teams are quite evenly matched. You know, they've done fantastic seasons. Um, you know, getting contention, you know, against the teams within it, that division, you know, is, is, is a feat within itself. I think it's going to boil down to who wants it the most, who's the hungriest um, out of the two teams. And, um, you know, I don't know much about uh, Doncaster Mustangs, to be honest. I know guys who play for the Pirates. And I know how hungry they are. We're just speaking to them and how much they want this. I believe it's, it's going to be a narrow result. I think it's going to be seven points in it. And I think it's going to be seven points for the Pirates. Okay, so a, a close one. So hopefully it'll be an exciting one to watch. Uh, but then further down south, we've got the rematch with the Olympians and the Aztecs. So uh, it was 10 points to six this weekend past. Do you think they'll get two out of two? Or is it Bristol going to get some revenge this weekend? Do you know something that's, you know, the, the Olympians travelled to Bristol last weekend and, you know, they, they won the game that they had to win. Um, I, I don't think Rick Aube will allow the Olympians to, to, you know, to, to not win. Uh, I think the Olympians will win this one um, and I think they'll win it comfortably, Alan, to be honest. I think, unfortunately, the Aztecs, I think their heads are down. Um, I, I just don't think they can claw their way back in London. I think the, the, the O's will take this one. OK, and try and secure that third place. Yep. Uh, so let's go down to Division 1 then. We'll start off with the Trojans uh, against the Jets. So uh, Trojans are, are kind of building momentum, scoring lots of points every game. And uh, are they going to repeat this, do you think? Yes, they are. Um, I can't see past the Trojans in this match. Um, you know, As much as the Jets, I respect them. They're, they're a very good organisation. They've been one of the top teams for many years in the UK football. I, I, just, I just think the Trojans you know, are on fire at the moment. I think anybody who goes up against them, I think they will just absolutely destroy, um, especially at home as well. Um, and I can't see past them. They're going to go eight and one, and I believe they're going to take the title this week. Okay, interesting. Uh, I'm uh, going to I'm going to put my neck on the line and say twenty one points. Twenty one points, so a, a comfortable victory then. 
<laughs> I think so. <laughs> well, let's stay in the north. Then we've got the Revolution and the Senators. Uh, so, you know, tough one to call, would you say, or or do you think there's going to be a clear winner from this one? No, I, I, the Senators will take this one absolutely, one hundred percent. You know, I just think the Senators are, are, are such a strong team. Um, Unfortunately, I mean, I have, I've, had, I've witnessed the Revolution play before. They, they, they're a good bunch of guys. I just don't think they're, they're that way they need to be right now. I think you know they've still got a lot of work to do down in Shropshire um, to become contenders or, or, or middle table team. But I just think the centres have got a little bit more experience. There. I just think they're going to be able to take this one, and I, and I think they'll take it comfortably as well. And I'll go with fourteen points in this one. Okay, and the last one to run through is the Wolverines and the Nighthawks. So. Uh, perhaps uh, an obvious winner here, but do you have a, a score that you can give us for this one? I, I'm going to put my reputation on the line, Alan, and I'm going to actually say the Nighthawks are going to get the first one. All right. Okay. I, 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 I just believe there's something there within the Nighthawks that they're going to get their first win of the season. Um, do you know, as much as I respect the Wolverines, they're a very good side. I've played against them a few times myself before. Very good team. But I just think the Nighthawks, there's something there, and I think the Nighthawks are going to get their first win of the season this week. Don't ask me by how many points, and I don't think the Nighthawks will care, but I just think they will get their first win. I've got a feeling. Okay, so very uh, uh, a bold prediction there, but hopefully we, we uh, do see a victory for the Nighthawks. It'll be good to, to see something happening there. So let's move a little bit further south then. Um, two games in the Central Division. Let's start with the, the Mavericks and the Thunder. So Mavericks taking on the top team at the moment. Uh, is they going to cause an upset or uh, are Sussex in too much of a good rhythm right now? No, Sussex are on a form. They're on a roll at the moment. You know, the, 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 you know, again, I just think that the, the Thunder have got excellent experience with them throughout the team. Um, they've got a great coaching system. They've got a great you know, a bunch of guys down in Sussex. I just don't think that the Mavericks will win this one. I just think that the Thunder will be stronger, and I think it'll take it by 14 points, Alan. Okay, 14 points then. And then finishing off in Central South, you've got um, Essex and Cambridgeshire. So uh, bottom of the table versus middle of the table. Neither have had the best of years, but uh, uh, who's going to get the an, another win to help the record? Um, the Cats. I think the Cats are going to take this one, Alan. I think the Essex Spartans have not had the greatest of seasons. Um, you know, one and seven for the season. I don't think they're going to get another one before the season ends. Um, I think the Cats are, are going to go finish a bit stronger. They're going to go four and five this week. Um, again, it's going to be a close one. I, re- I reckon. No, I see a close one. I'm going to go 21 points for Cats. 21 points. My mind. 21 points. Yeah. So let's uh, finish now. Division two. Uh, let's go to the north first. We were talking about Division two north. We've got the Hurricanes and the Tigers. So. We had a, a, a what a lot of people thought was an upset earlier in the year. Can the Tigers do it again? Yes, I, I think the Tigers. Um, you know, they beat Dundee um, at home uh, earlier in the season, like as, you, as you mentioned, Alan. I think the Tigers now realise they've got a, an outside chance of making the playoffs. Had should they win against Dundee this weekend and win against the Blackhawks the week after, they're in the playoffs. Um, I think Dundee will be hurt from that Wolves uh, victory, um, the narrow victory up in the. Uh, Dawson Park in Dundee. Um, it's not going to be easy for the Tigers, but I think they'll win it by seven points. Okay, so just one score on that one. Uh, now in Division 2 East, as we were discussing, we've got the Pathfinders with the second match in a row against the Blue Raiders. So um, a comfortable victory the first time. Is it going to be two in a row? Yeah. <clears throat> I just don't see I just don't see past the Pathfinders in this one, unfortunately. Okay, then, and then we've also got the Cheetahs and the Gladiators. So uh, they've come off a win now. Can Watford do two in two weeks? Uh, yes. <laughs> That's my answer to that one. I think, as I mentioned before, the Watford Cheetahs are a better team than what the record actually make out. Um, again, I think the Cheetahs will take this one. I'm going to go 14 points in this game as well, Alan. Okay, and then the last one in the East, we've got the Saxons back in action. So looking to remain undefeated. Uh, the Pumas not having a great season, so I take it that would be a comfortable one for them, yes? I think so, um, absolutely. Um, Wally White's team have gone from strength to strength in every single game. Got great facilities now down in uh, Peterborough, at the rugby club down there, um, and, and all credit to the organisation. I just don't think that the Saxons will be caused, well, well, I don't think the Pumas will cause the Saxons any problems whatsoever. I'm going to go actually with a 30 point uh, lead for that one. 30 points, so a good chance for them to get some momentum going into the playoffs. And yep. 
we were talking about the central division, so we had those the, the top three teams fighting it out. Well, two of them are back in action against each other. It's Predators and Titans. So uh, this one is surely going to be a, a, an exciting one to watch or an exciting one to follow. It is. Uh, you know, it's, again, it's it's one of these ones. Whoever wins, you know, potentially can take the title here, um, or, or certainly put them in in good stead to take the title. I, I, you know, Predators and Titans both had excellent results last week. It's such a hard hard game to call. I think the Titans are going to sneak it ten points. Okay, ten points then. And the uh, last couple of games in Central Division, we've got. Uh, uh, the Bombers and the Presidents. So Presidents have done a, a reasonable job for themselves, make a, a, a good name for the team in their first year. Can they get another victory on the board? Absolutely, Alan. Um, all, all credit to Jeff Rotter and the guys in Durham um, for bringing another team on board with great facilities again. Um, got two wins the first season. I don't think they'd really expected too much from the first season. Um, I think the whole thing about this was experience um, more than anything. Um, to answer your second question, I think the Bombers will win. Uh, I don't think the Presidents are going to be able to beat the Bombers. Um, I, I don't think the Bombers are going to run away with it, but I'll go with, go with 14 points to the Bombers. Okay, so a reasonably close match. And then we'll finish off with the uh, the surge against the Crew Railroaders. So uh, sort of a, 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 a bottom two teams fighting it out. Uh, who's going to take this one? I know. it's, it's you know, The records aren't great between two teams. Um it's such a hard one to call on, I'll be brutally honest. I want to see the Suns get their first game. I don't like seeing teams go zero, um, zero wins for their season. But I think the Suns will take this 10 points. And then we finish off with uh, Division 2 West. We've got the Corner Sharks facing off against the Bobcats. So uh, currently the Bobcats in seconds, the Cornish in thirds. Do you think the things will flip around? Can Cornish fight for that playoff spot? No, um, I just think the, the, the Bobcats have got a momentum at the moment, Alan. They're, they're, you know, they've got a taste for the playoffs. They're sitting second. I don't think they will let that go with, with relative ease. Um, you know, I believe the Bobcats could take this game 21 points. Okay, 21 points then. And then we've got Oxford and Centurion. So, uh, top team, Oxford, very strong. We've spoken to them recently, so they've uh, fairly pleased with their season so far, taking one game at a time. Uh, is this going to be another win for them then? Yes, absolutely, Alan. I think the, the Oxford Saints, you know, by, by far have been the best side in that division. Um, and, and I don't think they're going to stop now. Um, I believe they'll win that game quite easily against the Centurions. And I'm going to go 27 points. And I think it'll be a very comfortable win for them. OK, so that sets them up nicely for some good momentum going yep. into the last game. So that does it for our preview for this week coming. Uh, remember, you can always stay tuned for all your live score updates through our Twitter page, which is at gridiron underscore TV. You can also head to our Facebook page, which is gridiron TV. If you want to leave any comments on who you think may or may not win this weekend, or if you have any predictions of your own, feel free to get in touch. You can also visit the website at www.gridirontv.co.uk, where you can find all the fixtures for this week, as well as results from last week and all our other videos and episodes. So for myself, Alan Price, and from Stuart Young, thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you next time.